Okay, Gabriel Onde is going to talk about the new rewriting engine of Didacti. You can start. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. So I'll talk about the work that I've been doing for my Master 2 internship in, in the supervision of Frédéric Blanqui and Bruno Barras and with the help of uh, Rodolphe Lepigre. So it consists in, uh, yes, uh, the new rewriting engine of Didacti. So we'll start with a bit of context. Um, and then we'll see how we perform the first order matching uh, with the, the technique of decision trees established by Maranger. Then we'll see how we extend this technique to higher order and non-linear matching. We'll see some benchmarks and we will conclude. So we'll have some repetition with the two previous uh, talks, but I repeat uh, for people who, at least for people who joined for this talk. So um, Deducti is a type checker for the Lambda Pi calculus module writing, which is an extension of the lambda calculus with dependent types, so type which may depend on values. And module rewriting means that uh, the user can add uh, arbitrary reduction rules um, and thus not be limited to the beta reduction of lambda calculus. So we use it as a, Guillaume sh uh, showed us as a logical framework in which we encode several logics. And to the, for the goal of uh, making those logics interoper interoperable. And so for instance, the one of the objective is to have an encyclopedia of, of uh, formal proof where we can import some proof for, from any uh, proof assistant, transform it to a weaker logic, and then why not uh, export it to another proof assistant to, to use it. So for a bit of history, um, Didacti has been developed first in 2009 in a version in Haskell and Lua by Mathieu Boesplug. It has been rewritten in 2015 completely by Ronan Sayard, completely in OCaml. And this version already included uh, the use of decision trees, but um, the nonlinearity and uh, higher order rewriting were handled naively or more, we'd say, linearly. We'll, we'll see much more about that later. And uh, a third version has been. Uh, created in 2018 by uh, Rodolphe Lepire, which is more focused on the interactivity with, with the user to be able to develop proofs in the logic we have encoded. And this version is made of 6,000 lines of OCaml. So we'll see again some features of Didocti and one, what we mean by rewriting in Didocti. So if we declare the natural numbers with the two constructors 0, the Z, and the successor, we have the rules with uh, when a variable is pre preceded by the CGL dollar, it means that it's a variable. And so we have the reduction rules for the natural. And we see that the rule on the second line or the third line total overlap with the previous one. And this is totally fine in Didacti. We have uh, functions as uh, first class citizens, which means that uh, symbol like map can take a function as argument and apply it to any other element. So here we see that the map function takes a function as first argument and applies it to each element of the list. We can rewrite on the level of type and the function which I show is the same as uh, the one that uh, Guillaume and Frederick showed, which is that the function array takes a natural and rewrites to the type of the function that takes uh, n numbers and return a natural number. So you have a arity of n rewrites to the function that, ta that takes n natural numbers and return a natural number. And we have um, rewriting on lambda terms. So here you see the differentiation of the sine function, which uh, rewrites to another lambda term. So we can pattern match on those lambda term. We have nonlinearity, which allow us, for instance, to encode the membership function here. Uh, where we see that if the first argument of the membership function is the same as the count cell of, or the head of the list, we will write to true. And so we will write to true if and only if the, the two terms x are convertible. And we have occurrence check, which is very similar to what is done in combinatory reduction systems. That we mean that in the first rule, delta one of lambda x, y, f of x, we rewrite to the differentiation of lambda x f of x if the terms that match the variable f of x contains only the var variable x. If the term contains only the variable y, 
then we are in the case of the second law and we rewrite to the null function. So our contribution here is to bring um, nonlinear matching and abstraction matching in this in decision trees. And so we can give some motivations in respect to the application of DDoT we use. And so often nonlinearity is used in, in, in encoding to erase the casts because often we have to cast some term to some type to another type, for instance, with cumulative type system or in PVS, for instance, and predicate subtyping, we want we often want to cast and systematically want to cast a, a, a term X to from a type T, say to a type U. And if T and U are the same, we are in the case of cast of TT, we want to erase this cast. And for abstractions, we are often uh, we need to encode, for instance, the for all of higher the logics with an abstraction. So we need to match on them. So let's begin with uh, what has been done by Maranger uh, and first and decision trees for first order and linear matching. So first, a bit more formally, we say that the term T matches a pattern P if there is a substitution sigma such that the sigma instance of pattern P is equal to T. And in this vocabulary, T is a lambda pi term. That means that it's either the type, big type, which is the type of types, or the term kind, which is used to type type and uh, dependent types. It can be a bound variable, so introduced by an abstraction. It can be F, the, the symbol of the signature. It can be the application of two terms. It can be as well an lambda abstraction or a dependent product. And if P is a pattern, it can be a pattern variable, which um, any, any term match the pattern variable X of Y if the bound variables that are included in this term is a subset of the bound variables in the vector Y. Um, we, have, we can have uh, the application of a symbol of the signature to any other pattern. We can have the lambda abstractions as a pattern and we can have a bound variable. Fine, and so we'll see a bit, so some of the work that have been done. So first Maranger uh, wrote the, how to compile pattern matching in OCaml to decision trees. So it handles the case of OCaml, which is made only of constructors, um, which uses the rules ordered linearly. So you can only uh, use a rewriting rule if the rules above do not apply. And it doesn't ha handle uh, Lambda terms. Ronan Sayer uh, re so wrote the first version of DDoT, which used uh, decision trees à la Maranger. Christopher Rose um, wrote a combinatory, combinatory reduction system using decision trees as well. So here we use uh, decision trees in all those works, but we can also use uh, pattern matching uh, with automata. And this has been done by Egi and Nishiwaki in their Egeson language. And we can also see uh, for more interested people, all the rating engine of the rating engine competition, which has been uh, launched back recently. So first, we will see a bit of motivation and the benefits of uh, rewriting with decision trees. So if we have the three uh, rewriting rules here, u of a writes to zero, u of s to one, and u of u of x to two, we can form a, a naive decision trees, which is the one on the left. Which, um, which corresponds to matching the rules from left to right and the symbols in these rules from left to right. We'll see what, what we mean. So if you want to match the term U of U of S of A, then we will first compare the, the head U with the first term U of the first rule. And so here it matches. So we proceed and U and A doesn't match. It's not the same symbol. So what we do is we backtrack to the roots and we try the second rule, which is U of S. And we match again the, the head of the term U with U and it matches. So we continue, it doesn't match. We backtrack again and we, re we retry U of U, which matches and U of U, U and U it matches. And we had a pattern variable in the rule. So anything matches, so S of A in particular matches X. And so we have a writing uh, successful in six operations. 
And we can see that one of the first benefits that uh, we have in uh, using the senior trees is that on the right tree, we factorize the first branch since they are, they are all uh, matching on you. And so what we do is that we match on you and that is done and we won't backtrack anymore. And that is an important property of decision trees that we never backtrack. So you matches you, okay. And then we will try the second, the second U with, against each element of the edges. So U against A is a failure, U against A is a failure as well, and U against U is a success. And so we succeed in here four operations. So we see that we have, here we have uh, two operations uh, less, and it can be quite important when uh, writing a lot of terms or big files and verifying the proofs. And so we have seen how to handle one argument. So now quickly how to handle two arguments. Uh, so assume we have the rating system A of C raised to one and anything, which is the wildcard, N E raised to two. So here we have, we rather match stack of terms in the sense that we have to match two different terms rather than an application. And what is the difference? We'll see a bit later, but first if we match, in fact, the difference is that we can start using right, uh, matching on the second argument. So here we, on the left, tree, we start by matching on the first argument. And if we decompose a bit the tree, we see that the first argument is either an A or anything, which will represent by the star. And so if it's an A, we can have the C, but we can as well have the E because the on the second rule, it can be an A as well. And on the left, we have the anything. And if, if, if it wasn't an A, then it's only an E. And so if you want to rewrite to, to the second rule, you will only uh, always perform two operations. On the right tree, you start by the second argument. And so either it's an E and it can be anything. So we, you, we succeed immediately or it's an, or it's begin by a C and can, it can only be an A. And so just graphically, we can say, see that the tree is smaller. So surely we will lead fewer operations. And we can give already the syntax or the language of decision trees. Um, so here a leaf is just represented by the constructor leaf. A node in which we compare the term we have, the head of the term we have to several uh, symbols is called a switch node. And so the switch node contains a list, a switch case list, we can tell, which maps any symbol to the, the subtree that is used if the term matches this symbol. And so we still have the uh, default case, which, which is used if um, the term of the, the head of the term we are matching is not in the other edges, is not in the list before. And if we want to perform a swap, we have the swap node, which, which tells to change the term we inspect in the stack. Right, quickly, how to see the substitution? Um, so we, this um, concerns how we replace the X in the right-hand side. In fact, we use, we introduce an environment, which will be used again later, called E here, and we use positions. So here we, we replace the X by in fact positions. So the X in the first rule was at position one, one. So we rewrite to a call to the environment at position one, one. And the same goes for uh, the rule the second rule. And so here, if we match the stack of terms B, B against the tree that we have obtained below, we will start here by the, the first argument. We match the B against the default case, which is a success. And as we will use it in the right-hand side, we memorize this term in the, in the environment, adding a mapping from position one, because it's the place of the term in the stack to the term that is matched, that is B. And so we are able to rewrite to C of E of one, which, which will be C of B. So what's missing now? In fact, we don't have talked about, we haven't talked about uh, lambda terms, lambda abstractions. We haven't talked about nonlinearity and neither of occurrence check. And so we will see now how we handle this. And uh, this is the contribution we propose in the paper. And so this is in fact the extension of Maranger's trees to higher the nonlinear matching. So first, um, what what does it boil down to? We can see here a, a linear, um, a nonlinear, and with occurrence check rewriting system with a, so an occurrence check in the first rule, 
with the G of X. Nonlinear patterns in the second rule with P and P raised to one, a normal rule finally. So we handle this. Uh, first, we match on lambda abstractions, just like any other constructor. So we have a new constructor, which is the lambda. And it behaves quite similarly to uh, the symbols. So in switch case list, you can have lambdas as well. And for occurrence checks and nonlinear system, or nonlinear uh, checks conditions, we introduce what we call conditional nodes. So first, we have to do some preparatory work. In that, we have to separate and to identify the positions of the constraints. And so if we have the, the rewriting system above, we can uh, just separate it into three, three structures. The first one contains the, like, the same uh, writing system, but we don't care about the, the non-interity checks and the occurrence check. The second structure contains the positions of the vari variable that must be convertible, which are subject to the nonlinearity check. And the third vector contains um, the position of the of the pattern variable, which uh, must which is subject to occurrence checks, and the the allowed variables in the term that is matched. Uh, and so uh, consider we have the following rewrite system. So since we are focusing on the um, occurrence check, we drop the structure about nonlinearity. And so we have a constraint at position 1, 1, 1. Here the G. And we allow only x among the variable x and y. So we can build the following tree, which uh, specializes or which uh, um, compares the head of the symbol twice to a, a lambda abstraction. And if we want to match the terms, say lambda x, lambda y, x plus y, and a, so the stack, so we'll start matching this. So we will look under the abstractions and match successfully. And then we will use, again, the environment we have introduced for right-hand side substitution and save the term that is subject to a constraint into this environment, even if we don't need it in the right-hand side. So we're using by this environment. And then since we have the term in this environment, we will be able to check the constraints on the term in this environment. And so here, in the term x plus y, we must verify that the term among x and y, only x appears in this term. And since there is y in this term, this check uh, ends up in a failure. So here we have seen that, uh, suppose we are in the same condition, so we have the environment that is filled with a term. So 111 has a term. And so we can immediately check the condition leading to the, the tree on the left. So if it succeeds, we go on the left branch and we continue. And if it fails, well, we might, we might have to continue because we might have other rules that may apply. But we can also delay the check. Remember, since we have the term in the environment, we can always use it later. And we can first try to match the first order system. So we can match on A and B. If it's B, we won't have to make a, an occurrence check because uh, we, we match against the pattern variable P, which doesn't have any occurrence check. So branching on B we, will sometimes allow, you, allow us to dodge an occurrence check. And if we match on A, then we will have to match to perform the occurrence check to rewrite either to one or to fail if the occurrence check fails. And for nonlinearity, in fact, it's uh, very similar because we use the same say, framework of conditional nodes. But it's just that the constraints are a bit different. We saw that the constraints are a set of couples of positions, which are the couples of positions which must be convertible. And so we'll be able to trigger a nonlinearity check if the environment contains the two, the two position and the, the, the two terms at the position which are subject to nonlinearity check. And so again, with the nonlinearity, we are able to delay or not the, 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 the checks. And in fact, um, performing an occurrence check can lead to having to reduce to strong normal form, no, normal form the term because we might have to erase the some bound variables and try whether we, they can be erased. And this leads to reducing to normal form. 
And the same goes for a nonlinearity check, where we have to check whether the two terms are convertible, and that may lead to many reductions. And so the heuristic we have implemented tend to postpone or delay the those checks. And so when we have uh, in the figure we have seen pre previously, we tend to to uh, postpone the checks and do them at the end when we have finished completely the first order um, rewriting. And we tend to favor columns with many constructors so that we can filter out rules more quickly. So now we can see some benchmarks to see how it performs. Um, so first we can uh, talk a bit about uh, the rewriting engine competition, which is uh, in fact a set of uh, tests which are translated to many rewriting engine syntax. But those tests are, prime, are focused on first order writing and conditional rewriting. We do not handle conditional writing. So we had to select some files that, are, that do not uh, involve conditional writing. And so we can see here comparing against Kefi OBJ mode and run GHC, which is a interpreted Haskell, that we compare quite well to Kefi OBJ in general. Uh, and we are in, in fact, we are faster than Haskell in, on very small examples, but in, on bigger example, uh, Haskell tend to be faster than, than uh, DWT. Uh, we are always more uh, slower than uh, mode. Um, and on libraries, we can also, uh, in fact, uh, compare DWT to other versions. So versions without decision trees and also version with decision trees, but not the integrated checks in the tree. And so here we compare with a, a small library of Sudoku solving and DPLL solving. So first we see that um, the version with the decision trees and the integrated checks is the faster. And we'll see, we see also that uh, decision tree without integrated check is already a huge gain on uh, the version without decision trees. Um, and we can also provide an example, which is a bit tailored for our writing engine, but shows that how it can be more efficient. And so we can see how it avoids condition checks and here nonlinear checks. So if we look at the function here, which is a function which takes three arguments, um, if we look at the first rule, we see that if there is a nonlinearity between the first and the third argument, it decreases on the third argument. If there is a nonlinearity on the first and the second, it decreases as well on the third argument. And if the third argument is a zero, it decreases on the first argument. So what the general behavior will be that it decreases on the third many times. And then when it reaches zero, it decreases on the first and the second because they are rewritten to the same term. And it brings back the third argument to a, a big number, which is called upper. And in fact, we can see that the the algorithm with decision trees will be more efficient because they will be able to, to target immediately the third argument and so avoid nonlinearity checks, the second nonlinearity checks in many cases. And in fact, our version with integrated checks will be more efficient than the one without integrated check because um, doing integrated checks naively will force the algorithm to always check whether the first argument is uh, convertible with the third one, whereas our version will directly jump to the second, uh, the second rule. And so avoid the first useless, often useless uh, conversion tests. And we can see this, uh, the results on the charts on the right, where we see that, uh, well, using these entries is certainly a gain, but in fact, uh, ordering the nonlinearity checks brings a huge improvement as well. And so to conclude, we can uh, say that we have, um, our work is an extension of Mar Maranger's work in the sense that it takes back the same ideas and uh, it brings the profit of Maranger works to uh, the higher order case and non-linear case. And so we gain with that of uh, the gain or that we have a flexible algorithm in, on which we can play with the heuristics and we have uh, an efficiency increase. And for further work, we can, uh, we can try uh, conditional writing. Um, we can also try 
creating an incremental rebuild of decision trees because for now, when we declare a new rule, we completely erase the old tree and rebuild a new one. We can also try to fine tune the heuristics to have better performances and we may want to perform matching modulo associativity and commutativity. And so that's all for my talks and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Gabriel. Um, so um, I have two questions here. One is from uh, Delia. Delia, I'm going to unmute your microphone. Or you, you can- Yes, yes, okay. yes thank you. Uh, yes, I have a question for Gabriel. So um, if you restrict your, your study to the nonlinear first order part, how uh, your work compared to the adaptative nonlinear pattern matching automata that was presented by Eric Erkens and Maurice uh, Lavo. Um, yeah, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't follow the, the talk of yesterday, so I might not be able to answer precisely the question. Okay. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> um, and I, uh, there's a question in the Q&A by Michael Flapper. Uh, did you benchmark decision tree implementations on an Italki export from a proof assistant such as Agda? And if so, uh, what are the results? Ah, um, in fact, this is, uh, yeah, I didn't do it myself, but it was done uh, many times before because uh, by people who were exporting things. And so, in fact, when we do this, we tend to compare the time of proof checking uh, the files we have exported to the proof checking from the, the proof assistant uh, from which we export the proofs. And so the, the results are that we, we are surprisingly faster, but we can mitigate this, um, this, uh, this uh, result by saying that when we export a proof, we already performed a uh, some expansion or some computation during the translation. And so to be very precise, we would, we perhaps we would have to take into account the time of, uh, of compilation and, tr and translation plus the time of proof checking uh, and compare it to the time of proof checking of the, the, the proof assistant. But I haven't uh, tried this on the, uh, with our trees and uh, so we have, I don't have proper benchmark of this. Okay. Um, and also you said something about um, uh, the examples uh, with ASCO that uh, for bigger examples, uh, you had uh, worse results. Do you have any idea of what type of uh, examples you perform better and what type of examples you perform worse in ASCO? So uh, empirically, we see that on very small examples, so examples which are solved in less than one second, we tend to be faster. And uh, as soon as the examples get bigger and that uh, Haskell takes like, for instance, uh, two seconds to solve, we are slower. Okay. Okay, uh, uh, any additional questions? Let me see if there are any raised hands, no. So thank you again, Gabrielle.